consider two random experiments. In the first experiment, let the random variable x be the roll number of the third double six in repeated rolls of a pair of fair dice. In the second experiment, let the random variable y be the flip number of the 54th head in repeated flips of a fair coin. We would like to find mu sub x, the population mean of x, mu sub y, population mean of y, and a plot of the two probability mass functions of the two random variables to see how they compare. Now for the first experiment, we are looking at the roll number. Because we're looking at the roll number, this will be the negative binomial with a capital N. Likewise, on the second one, because we are looking at the flip number of the 54th head, notice it's not the number of tails before the 54th head, but rather it is the trial number of the 54th head. Again, we will have a negative binomial distribution for Y with a capital N here because you're looking at basically in both cases the trial number of the rth success. So for x we know it's negative binomial and now we want to figure out what its parameters will be. Well the parameters in the negative binomial distribution are r and p so those are what will go in here. In the case of x we are looking for the third success where success is defined to be a double six so r is equal to three and the probability of rolling a double six when you're rolling a pair of fair dice is one thirty sixth likewise for y we have a negative binomial distribution and the parameters are again r and p but they will be different for y because this time r is going to be 54 because we're waiting for the 54th head and head here is considered success on a trial and the probability of tossing heads for a fair coin is one half. Now the next step is to try to come up with the population mean for x and the population mean for y. So mu sub x is the expected value of x and if you remember from the previous slide, that is going to be r divided by p. So in the case of x, we get 3 divided by 136, and that is 3 times 36, or 108. So we expect to have to roll 108 times on average to arrive at the third double six. In the case of y, mu sub y, is the expected value of y and once again we use the formula r divided by p r is 54 54 divided by one half is again 108 so I have rigged the numbers here so the means of these two distributions are the same even though their parameters differ now the interpretation here of the 108 is if I flip a fair coin repeatedly until I get my 54th head, the number of flips that it will take is 108. So now here is some R code for plotting the probability mass function of X and the probability of mass function of Y. The code given below plots just the probability mass function of X. Similar code will give you the probability mass function of Y. To begin, the parameter r is set equal to 3, that's from right here. The parameter p is set equal to 1, 36th, and that is right here. The next thing to do is to define the support, and the support will go from 3 to infinity because you have a negative binomial distribution with a capital N. Well, we can't go all the way out to infinity, so I just chose a large number like 200. That's a number that's significantly larger than the mean, which is 108. Next, the probability mass function is put into the vector x. This is simply the probability mass function. When it is fed a vector x, it will come back with appropriate values of the probability mass function and those are plotted 
as spikes because the type equals quote h quote here and x which runs from 3 to 200 will appear on the horizontal axis and f which is the probability mass function will appear on the vertical axis. On the next page is the picture of the probability mass function of x at the top and the probability mass function of y on the bottom. Notice that there is a capital X and a capital Y subscript. That's how you can tell the two of these apart. A couple things to notice here. First of all, this particular probability mass function does not start at 0, but rather it starts at 3. The way you get x equal 3 in this case is to roll double sixes three times in a row. Very unlikely, as you can see. This distribution here of y starts at 54. And the way you get y to be 54 is you flip a fair coin and get 54 heads in a row. That also is very, very unlikely. Next thing to notice is that 108 is the balance point for both of these distributions. Mu sub x is 108. That's where this distribution is centered, the balance point. And also down here, mu sub y is equal to 108. And that is the balance point of this distribution. So they're centered around the same value. You'll also notice that all of these spikes sum to 1 and all of these spikes sum to 1. Notice the difference in the two axes here. And because both of those sets of spikes sum to 1 as they must for any ma probability mass function, one conclusion you can draw right away is that the spread or the standard deviation of the random variable x is much larger than the spread of y. y is much more tightly clustered around its mean value than x is. Another thing that you might notice is that this second distribution in particular is bell-shaped and it is bell-shaped by something which is known as the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem is covered in the last chapter of the book. But basically, the story is, as your r value, which in this case is 54, gets larger and larger, the distribution becomes more and more bell-shaped. So for r equals 3, not so much bell-shaped. You can see it's pretty skewed here. But once you get r equal to 54, it's got a pretty symmetric bell-shaped distribution. Not completely symmetric, because you see this cuts off at 54. There's no mass at all at 53, whereas this tail goes all the way out to infinity.